Hello and welcome to the Amplifying Scientific Innovation Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Sophia Onoye Onye, founder and CEO of the Sophia Consulting Firm, a life science marketing and communications consultancy that was established in New York City with the goal of amplifying scientific innovation. The goal of this podcast is to showcase scientific innovation stemming from global life science companies prior to and following COVID-19 from the perspectives of founders, CEOs, and other senior executives who are working on the development of transformative life-saving solutions for patients. My guest today is Mr. Yihel Tao, CEO of Coal Plan Biotechnology, an Israeli-based regenerative and aesthetic medicine company. Yihel is a highly respected industry executive with over 25 years of management experience in both high-tech and biotech companies. He joined Coal Plan as its CEO in 2010. Prior to Coal Plan, Yihel served as CEO and co-founder of Regenti Biomaterials Limited and has worked in positions of increasing responsibility in innovative health technology companies such as Proton Biotech and Orthoscon Technologies. I had the pleasure of meeting Yihel for the first time at the 2019 ATC Wainwright Healthcare Investor Conference, and it's been a, such a pleasure to provide strategy communication support to coal plants in the past few months. Welcome to the show, Yihel. Hi. Yeah, it's great to be here. Thank you. <laughs> Wonderful. So my very first question is the most important one, at least in my opinion. What is your definition of scientific innovation? Um, okay, so uh, scientific innovation, in my view, is an innovation that leads to a disruptive technology. Mm. A disruptive technology is a technology that makes an impact on humanity. Mm. Uh, we at Coal Plant, we have developed a technology to mass produce a recombinant human collagen, mm -hmm. which is the basic uh, or the building block for regenerative medicine. Mm -hmm. And in my view, this is. Uh, a scientific innovation mm -hmm. which contributes to the quality of life and longevity. Wonderful. And if you think about it, what would you consider to be your most notable accomplishment pre CEO? That's a very interesting question. <laughs> I need to think about it. But first thing that uh, comes to my mind is me being a young engineer uh, mm. in semiconductors industry. Mm. And uh, there was a problem in the production line, a problem that caused in one of the stations hmm. a, a low yield in the production and also the cost of the product was too high because of this problem. Hmm. So I, you know, I was disturbed and I, I, I was thinking about potential solutions and started to work on a solution hmm. which I felt uh, might work. I gathered around me a team of young engineers hmm. like me <laughs> and we worked, uh, you know, to the late hours. After the working hours, uh, other it was like under the table kind of project. Mm -hmm. Until we had a proof of concept, and then we presented it to management. We got their blessing to go ahead with the budget. Mm -hmm. And six months later, we had uh, a solution, a working solution. And uh, you know, I was uh, eventually awarded by the president of Israel for uh, for this uh, initiative, which wow. uh, basically contributed to productivity and a lot of cost savings. So I would say that uh, this was, you know, uh, a, a very uh, inspiring moment in my career, which shaped me as an as a engineer and also as a, as a manager. Mm -hmm. And after that, it's very hard to pick up some other, uh, you know, uh, other examples because it's a combination of uh, all of my experiences that helped right. me to become, you know, uh, to become the CEO of the time today. Right. That's very illuminating. I can't even imagine that scenario, but bravo. I think ingenuity is born at earlier stages of our careers. And it's always a good thing when you see that continuity. So thank you for sharing that. Now, my next question for you is, mm. can you provide a, a top-line overview of potential or ongoing work that may be related to immunotherapy and or anti-infectives? Just want to know more about your company's technology so that our audience will learn a little bit more about you. Okay, so, um, you know, coll collagen uh, is uh, the major building block in our body. Mm -hmm. It's, a, I, I would call it the ideal scaffolding molecule. Mm -hmm. which out of it you can make implants for regenerative medicine. But this will be the basis. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. So um, the difference between what we do and any other company is doing in the area of collagen is that we do it in plants. Mm-hmm. Uh, and our collagen is virgin collagen. Mm-hmm. Um, and it does not elicit immune response. Mm. And this is very important, particularly when you uh, uh, do uh, transplants, mm-hmm. uh, like kidney or heart or liver, mm-hmm. uh, pancreas, uh, the amount of collagen that is needed to make this kind of constructs mm-hmm. is relatively high. And it's very important that it will not elicit immune response because um, uh, these patients mm-hmm. have a su- suppressed immune system. Right, right. So, so uh, we, we are the only companies that can solve this problem with our collagen. This wow. is very important. Another wow. example is also uh, the ability of using the collagen as a biological ink mm-hmm. for 3D bioprinting where we can print uh, cancer tumors. Mm. In order to check the efficacy of drugs, different drugs, mm-hmm. even before you go to preclinical studies in animals, or even much before you go to, to clinical studies, mm-hmm. so you can check the drug candidates uh, on these printed tumors, and basically get the most optimal one, and then move ahead mm-hmm. to the clinical trials, and this will save a lot of money and time. Mm. Yeah, that's wonderful. Well, once again, thank you for sharing that information. I think that innovation, as you had described earlier, you'll you continue that line in the work that is being done at Copeland. Now, I'm curious, um, how has COVID-19 changed the way you approach work internally? You know, the major discovery was that we, we found that working from home is, um, is effective mm-hmm. if you plan it uh, properly. So, uh, we managed to operate the company very efficiently where some of the people work from home. Mm-hmm. I personally, I have every day, I have a commute of one and a half hour each direction. What? Which means that I'm spending three hours on the road wow. driving. And wow. this time became very efficient when I, instead of driving, uh, I just spend the time at home. Mm-hmm. So um, I would say that uh, this was... A very nice discovery, although it seems to be very trivial. Mm. Uh, uh, but but this was something that I'm planning to adopt in the future mm. and spend more time working from home, not only for me, but also for some of the employees, uh, some key employees that can do efficient work from home. Mm-hmm. Um, another good example is the social media. Social media uh, was uh, enhanced at coal plant. The activity is helping us to position the company better in the investors community and also uh, even um, the exposure and the positioning of the company uh, to our strategic collaborators. So this is a very efficient tool that we plan to enhance in the near future. And uh, finally, recruitment of employees. Mm -hmm. We are uh, using today platforms such as LinkedIn. Mm-hmm. Instead of using the headhunting companies or the recruitment mm-hmm. agencies, we are using LinkedIn as a platform which see, uh, appears to be very efficient mm-hmm. to recruit new employees to the company. And we also use uh, what we call Spotlight Days mm-hmm. at the universities, mm-hmm. which is done uh, also using the Zoom platform. Mm-hmm. And this way we can gather, you know, audience of 100 people all together in one session and present the company and then you get a lot of good good resumes, people. Oh. So these are just a few examples of how we changed our you know, working uh, environment uh, since the pandemic started. That is wonderful. I see probably you know, <laughs> Facebook, Twitter, and a few other companies have actually moved forward to make working from home <laughs> an option for some employees that choose to do so. So thank you for sharing those insights. Now. On the other hand, how have your corporate social responsibility efforts changed as a result of the pandemic? You know, one of the major considerations is the well-being of the employees, um, particularly the financial well-being of the employees. And we mm-hmm. uh, made the decision at the beginning of the pandemic, uh, where uh, while the forecast was uh, not so uh, promising about the time it would take, we decided to pay salaries, full salaries, to all the employees in the company. And this motivated the employees um, and 
they are very grateful about uh, you know this decision and uh, we could see also uh, in their performance a significant uh, you know uh, a contribution to the company as wow. a result of this decision wow that that is again great i, I like how far thinking the company is and i think the employee first approach is one that has proven to be successful for many companies um, so my next question for you, it's a bit more philosophical. If you're thinking broadly, what are some key consideration factors that you believe will be very important for sustaining innovation in the life science industry? You know, we have a slogan in the company. Uh, it's all about people. Right. So um, the people that we are recruiting to the company should be with natural curiosity, mm -hmm. innovative people, uh, creative uh, people who uh, do not hesitate to challenge the obvious, and uh, people who are willing to initiate mm -hmm. uh, new ideas. And this is something that uh, we are looking for. And uh, I believe that this is one of the reasons why Corplan uh, has a, an image as an innovative company and is very attractive right. to our strategic collaborators, tier one companies, US companies, mm -hmm. are willing to be Corplan because of this reason. Right. And I would say that, uh, you know, from the broader perspective, um, you know, Israel is a small country. Mm -hmm. We are only 7 million in the population. Mm -hmm. But if you... Uh, look on the number of startup companies in Israel. Mm -hmm. You'll be surprised to find out that uh, Israel is one of the leading companies in mm -hmm. startups mm -hmm. worldwide per capita, I would say, uh, compared to other countries which are peaceful, uh, do not have the threats that Israel is facing, uh, countries that uh, are uh, strong financially, mm -hmm. like Japan, like China, mm -hmm. like uh, Korea, Canada, UK. Mm -hmm. um, and if you look for the answer to this question, why is this? I suggest everybody to read the book, Startup Nation. Ah, okay. And Startup this book, uh, that was the authors of the book are Dan Senor and uh, Saul Singer. Mm. And I suggest to read this book because I believe that this book may suggest some good answers to this phenomenon. Wonderful. Um, and then the next question is the continuity of the previous one. And uh, is there any technology or company that you're currently excited about? And it's okay if it's also Coplan. I just want to know what excites you so much regarding technology and innovation. Yeah, obviously Coplan. But <laughs> I would, I would uh, say that uh, I really admire United Therapeutics as ah. a company. Mm -hmm. We are partners of United Therapeutics. Mm -hmm. Still, uh, I know the company very close, mm -hmm. and uh, I know Dr. Dean Rothblatt, the CEO uh, of United Therapeutics. Mm -hmm. She is really uh, leading the company with a vision, and she has the vision of uh, unlimited supply of organs for transplantation. Wow. And, um, I really admire uh, Dr. Rothblatt for this initiative and the way she is leading the company. That's wonderful. I think that the mission to end organ shortage is a very important one. And as you know, there are hundreds of thousands of people all over the world that die each year because they're waiting for organ donation. So thank you for sharing that. Now, the final two questions, again, more philosophical. I don't know. I like philosophical questions. Uh, but my question for you now would be, how would your advice for a new biotech CEO be different today versus prior to COVID-19? Okay, so I I can intuitively think about three uh, points mm -hmm. that I can advise. Mm -hmm. The first one is um, to secure funding at mm -hmm. least one year. This is very important because in the pandemic time, there is no way to raise money. Mm -hmm. uh, the second one is to structure the company in a way mm -hmm. that it will be flexible enough to accommodate altered conditions, mm -hmm. like we had with the pandemic, mm -hmm. like working under constraints, mm -hmm. the social uh, distance, and uh, the sh working in shifts and other things. So the structure of the company should allow this flexibility. Mm 
Mm -hmm. And the, the third point is uh, that um, in terms of suppliers and strategic collaborators, mm -hmm. my advice is always have more than one supplier for mm -hmm. critical items. Mm -hmm. Because if one of your supplier goes bankruptcy or mm -hmm. has some other challenges and can cannot supply, then it's better to have a second supplier. And it's always good to have more than one strategic collaborator for the mm -hmm. same reason. Well, thank you for sharing that. I think what's uh, underlying to what you shared is the importance of strategic planning. So thinking one step ahead, so that way you could be properly prepared for when issues and crises emerge, which is almost inevitable for CEO, as you know. And so in closing, I would love for you to share any final commentary or thoughts with our audience. That will be really appreciated. Well, no doubt that COVID-19 was a wake-up call to, uh, to humanity. And I think that we should take our lesson and make the necessary adjustments mm -hmm. to, uh, in our lives mm -hmm. and also in our organization to adapt to this kind of changing conditions and uh, developments. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Yehel, for joining us today. I appreciate your time and I hope you have a good rest of your, your day. <laughs>